Wir haben, wir haben noch eine Stunde, ihr seid noch eine Stunde später. Okay. Wie bitte? Ah, ja. Ah, der Chairman kommt. Our President. Äh, ich sehe in Thessaloniki scheint auch gerade die Sonne. Nicht direkt. Du hast den Rollladen runtergezogen. Ich das werde ich auch gleich ein... machen, was ich. Guten Morgen, guten Morgen. Wir haben uns gesehen. Hallo Vasco. Hallo, wie geht's dir? Hallo Vasco, wie geht's dir? Guten Morgen. Sehr guten Morgen an alle von euch. Sorry, weil ich ein bisschen zu spät war. Es ist lustig, weil ich in Portugal war und ich hatte Probleme mit dem Verlassen des Verlassens. Es passiert. Wunderbar. Es war gut, dich zu sehen. And I'd the like great to see yeah. you, Professor Fenger. Uh, yes. I, I, I've, I'm seeing that you are identified as Papi. Papi, is, yes, yes, Papi. <laughs> which uh, yeah. is Papi. particularly Papi. adequate for this meeting. <laughs> That's very correct for the meeting because it's Erasmus Papi, Thanasis Papi. In My uh, Papi. <laughs> Your puppy, my, puppy, my grandpappy, no. my grandpappy, because I have a puppy. So that's very accurate. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Well, uh, maybe we uh, should uh, wait uh, five or ten minutes more in order that the others can reach us, but uh, then we should begin because uh, uh, some people need to, to leave a little bit earlier. So uh, we should keep on time. It's a Saturday. Uh, what, a problem that I had is that uh, since in Portugal is one hour sooner than uh, the rest of Europe, 8.30 was a little bit early special for the technician that helped us with the transmission. It's a Saturday morning at 8.30. Uh, well, but we were able to manage, and uh, like this, uh, we can do it in, as, in, the, right, in the right time and uh, uh, with a reasonable, uh, the long, the reasonable time uh, to be used for the conference. Well, but, but let me see. Really? Yes. No, I, I would uh, only to say that in Greece they are privileged because it is one on one hour later. <laughs> it is 10:30. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The other thing, the other thing is that we are st we still have some things to do in the university today, unfortunately. So I yeah. have to leave earlier. Uh, okay. I will miss part of our conference today, unfortunately. Okay. Well, the important part is that we are here to pay an homage to Professor Fenger, and uh, we'll do uh, the best we can in order to be together and work uh, as usual. Uh, by the way, <laughs> I, I saw yesterday the conference was very good. Uh, we yeah. talked about lots of subjects. Uh, we uh, provided decisions for the future, for the near future. So I think the things were OK. Uh, so it means that we are still alive and the group uh, that was created by Professor Fenger is still working on, which is very good. Well, it, it, we I are hear all from Innsbruck and uh, guten Morgen, Ilma. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> Hello, Andreas here from Innsbruck. I have difficulties to hear. What, what did you say? Uh, Andreas from Innsbruck. Good morning, Hilma. Ah, good morning. Ah, good morning, Andreas. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I freue mich auch. Du hast ja gerade eine große Konferenz hinter dir. <laughs> ja, die musste ja leider abgesagt werden und wird jetzt Anfang März wiederholt, hoffe ich. Ja, ich wäre gern dabei gewesen. Ja. <lacht> ja, im März wird das dann hoffentlich stattfinden. Ach so. Ja. Also insofern, aufgehoben ist nicht aufgeschoben, denke ich. 
das Fest, die Festschrift hast du bekommen. Ja, vielen Dank, vielen Dank. Das war eine große Überraschung. Und, äh, Aber wir wollen hier nicht äh, unterbrechen. <lacht> ja. Nein, wir können ja nachher noch sprechen. Gut, das wäre schön. Ja. Okay, so back to Vasco. Hello. <lacht> Hello, Andreas, how are you? Oh, fine, thanks, Vasco. Nice to meet you. Okay, maybe we are already 21. Uh, we should begin. It's, we have 10 minutes after the hour, so uh, perhaps yeah. uh, we could go. Well, uh, it, it seems that I'm the first, and I should introduce you, Professor Fenga, which is something that is really not needed, but uh, it's my task. What teaching and learning, a homage to Professor Fenger. I met Professor Fenger 30 years, 31 years ago, in October 1990, when he invited me to participate in my first LPs meeting. On arrival at Hanover Airport, Professor Fenger was waiting for me with a large poster in his hand with the colors and the symbol of Europe and inscription help me. He took me to the hotel in his car. And when we, he, we arrived, it was about midnight. He asked me if I was too tired with the way of the plane, or if I could go downstairs to the bar after five minutes in my room to freshen up, to talk a little bit about the next day meeting. And it was then sitting at the table in the hotel bar with a glass of beer in the hand, that Professor Fenger talked to me passionately about his create, creature, his spiritual son, the Alpes Network. If, as they say today, in the language of the media of our information society, that a picture is worth a thousand words, the picture of this first meeting characterizes perfectly what Professor Fenger is. As you know, Elpis is the abbreviated name of the English expression European Legal Practice Integrated Studies. But it has a double meaning, as it also means hope in ancient Greek. And it is this hope created by our founding father in 1984 that makes professors and students coming together from every country of Europe and elsewhere for learning and teaching, aiming to, aiming to give to legal education a real European and global dimension, as well as also to contribute to build a Europe and a world of universities in the field of law. The idea of teaching and training European lawyers is part of the Erasmus Sockets program, of which the, the Alpes project was one of the pioneers but it goes further. For it implies the search for a new methodology and a new pedagogy of law, capable of overcoming the borders of national laws while moving towards a Europe and global legal theory and praxis, the construction of, we, of which constitutes the great challenge, but also the daily work of the office. The expansion and diversification of its activity from academic exchange to pedagogy and research carried out by the Alpes Network to the present day would then lead to the creation of the Alpes Master and the Alpes Research. Professor Ilma Senga, also known by the nickname of Professor Europe, Oh, Professor Europa, they said in Germany, it was born in Leipzig on 28 October 1931 and graduated in Heidelberg with a doctorate in law in 1961 and an associate degree in civil law, civil procedure law and legal methodology in 1969. He taught in Heidelberg, Bonn, Mainz, and Hamburg, before being appointed professor in Hanover in 1980. His extensive work includes 
not only civil law and civil procedural law, but also legal theory and methodology, international private law, comparative law, European law, and even professional practice and training. This demonstrates his vocation as a jur jurist without borders, not only because of the subject chosen in the most varied fields of the legal encyclopedia, but also because of the language used as some of his works were written in a foreign or rather European language, in English, French, and Greek. This encyclopedic and European vocation explains why Professor Fenger became the German member of the scientific committee set up by the European Commission for the Metz Colloquium in 1994, which was devoted to the team of legal education and training in tomorrow's Europe. And it explained why he was elected in 1997, president of newly created Association of Law Faculties in Europe, which has been just, crea had been just created in 1996 in Leuven. Or why he was made Doctor Honoris Causa in the Universities of Rouen, the Catholic of Lisbon, Lava, and Thessaloniki. With this academic and human career, Professor Fenger made, an, made of Hanover a real crossover for the law of the countries of Europe and for European law, which reminds us the example of another famous compatriot, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, also born in Leipzig in 1646, who first came to Hanover as a librarian after writing his book, New Method for Learning and Teaching Jurisprudence, and who put Hanover on the map of European culture. As it is also of Leibniz and his attempt to reconcile unity and infinity, the personal and universal, with, this, with his theory of the monads that I remember when I think of what, in the field of law, and keeping all the due differences, Professor Fenger tried to do, seeking to reconcile German law and European law, national and international or global law, European and comparative law, law theory, and legal practice. Professor Fenger, my dear friend, Kilmer, it is for me a real pleasure and a great honor, as well as a duty of friendship to introduce you in this conference that the Alpes Network organized for you. And I believe that there is no greater honor for a professor than to be homage by his peers, peers who furthermore, furthermore will, still, will still keep on doing the task of realizing the hope. Thank you very much. And now we have our guest of honor. <laughs> Professor Ilma Ferner is going to do us a uh, speech. I have it here. <laughs> uh, but uh, you listened to him. Uh, it was good that he was here with us today. Uh, and I give him the floor. Thank you very much for the friendly words, more than friendly words. Mr. President, dear colleagues, friends, and participants of this special conference, I feel overwhelmed and greatly honored, indeed, by the fact that you came together here, at least virtually, with the intention to discuss an important subject as an homage on my behalf. My sincere thanks and deep gratitude for that. At the beginning of the debate, let me say just a few words whereby I want to stress two general aspects related to the very wording of the conference title itself. 
The first item is concerned with the relation between teaching and learning. The second will look at peculiarities of teaching and learning law in the context of our ASS network. Teaching and learning might be regarded at first sight as completely separate procedures, each one fulfilled by, by different persons and normally at different periods of life. Parents are teaching their children by showing them what things are for and how to behave properly. Children receive the message and get it in their brain. The activity is, or at least seems to be, purely one-sided. Parents give and children take the relevant knowledge. But today, we are aware that the mechanism is considerably more complex. This is becoming increasingly obvious when we look at the teaching and learning process in education at a higher level. That is in schools, while school in universities. When I started learning law, 17 years ago, mainly in the app of two German universities who stood in a long lasting tradition of some hundred, some hundred years, especially famous in the field of law for some outstanding scholars of the 18th and 19th century. In that time, a teaching, one teaching mode was still not unusual that handled the lecture as a lecture in the strict sense of the word. The professor came in, put the manuscript or sometimes even a well-known book written by himself on the cathedra and read the text to separate the safety from the audience literally more or less allowed, without any interruption from the beginning until the end of the academic hour. Several years later, I came to face the exact counterpart of this behavior, now demonstrated as the other side by the student, in order to be admitted to the presentation of a doctoral thesis, law students coming from a to Heidelberg were obliged to take beforehand some courses in German law to the final written examination. In one case, that was my task <coughs> now as a professor to set the exam topic and to evaluate the paper. I asked the student to write a small essay on a specific subject in the law of application. The examinee was seated alone in a closed classroom, and after five hours of writing, he handed over to me a 10 pages long manuscript, which looked not so bad. But by near inspection, I became aware that the text only repeated word by word what a colleague had written in a manual application before interrogated, the student furnished prima facie evidence that he had learned by heart the whole book and was able to cite pages on whatever subject out of it. By the way, this was not a unique case. Another colleague had been confronted with the same phenomenon by another student, another field of thought. And to be sure, room was carefully searched before. It was a time when electronic equipments for possible support were not yet invented. I think we all agree that these two examples do not represent that, what we call, what we would call teaching and learning in the proper sense. 
at least we would not call it good teaching and learning. Certainly, you know, quite similar behavior in other situations of our business life. In a scientific conference, usually the relevant speaker will be seen reading a paper aloud in front of the audience, as it did the old professor in the classroom. In order to enable us the communication in foreign languages, we memorize a word paper by sheer seeing and hearing words, nothing else, like it was done by the assiduous examinee I reported off just now. But education is different. It's much more than transmission and reception of data. Modern theories of didactic told us that knowledge never can be transmitted in an identical form from one person to the other. But it is always a construction of its own, built by each person individually. And they told us that future communication had to be at the heart of education. Now I come to the point. It was in the light of these ideas, the guiding lines for the structure of the exchange facilities within the APIS network emerging in the early 80s became formulated. The RISE advertisement emphasized specifically the character and merits of the students as a future learning process. For the matters of course, Europeish Praxis, which was founded in the year 1988 in Hanover, corresponding rules were established. So, students coming from a foreign faculty should be obliged to show already a certain competence, enabling them to meet the others really on the same level. Therefore, they had to have passed at least two study years in their home university and had to possess already sufficient knowledge of the receiving university's language to follow lecture. The incoming students came not in separate classes, but were purposely taught together with the others. The Gatorade Common Seminar on European Legal Practice frequently joined by a visiting professor. Old, an ideal place for future teaching and learning in future discussion. On the other hand, as to the content of studies, the students were advised, besides European law and comparative law, to two such subjects they could not find also in the program of the whole university. That means philosophy, sociology, economy, general theory, methodology of law, etc., public international law as well, did not meet the requirement. Instead, successful participation in at least four classes devoted to the host university's national law was explicitly demanded. Hereby, a sufficient input of completely new points of view should be secured also. Of course, with regard to the short period of time spent abroad, the goal could not be study the legal system of host university as intensely as that of the home country. But the program opens the chance to acquire capacities more and more needed by lawyers in the European market. Comprehension of different ways of critical thinking, ability to find and familiar sources of law, the certain potency for connecting norms of one legal system with institutional conditions of another, taking in consideration requirements of the law. Now, let's see. Um, to the end. The building up of the Manchester course was a rather ambitious part, ambitious project 
destined to provide students with quite more than the adventure of a tourist excursion to wonderful places in the world that it was. Also, by teaching and learning together has been a work, even some kind of a European spirit. Although later on it became somewhat greater down, water down to certificate studies, the scheme is mainly showing the same future. On the basis of Erasmus Mundus, the operation field of the AFIS network, under the leadership of my successors, uh, was a large, widely beyond the borders of the European Union, as it was done especially by the LLM joint degree course on European practice. Nevertheless, apart from the institutional framework, the enduring challenge for good law teaching and learning is still resting in front of us. On to this subject, special attention is still directed not only by the enduring efforts of our colleague, Klaus Friedrich Germanmann, for instance, recently by the addition of the new book, Innovative Teaching and Learning, Teaching in European Legal Education, and by the present network coordinator, Vasco Ferreira da Silva, who initiated, thankfully, this special conference. Thank you all for your attention. I am very curious and excited to hearing now the speaker's words as well as the debate in Europe. Mr. President, the floor is yours.